Good evening, everyone. My name is uh, Luis Perez Peria. I serve as chair of the Historic Districts Commission in Concord. Welcome to the May 18, 2023 meeting of the Town of Concord Historic Districts Commission. The commission will review three continuances and three new applications tonight. I will make an announcement at the beginning of the meeting, and we will also conduct some additional business at the end of the meeting. We're conducting uh, this meeting online in accordance with the Commonwealth of Massachusetts executive order suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law. The public may access this call through both telephone and video conferencing. Members of the public will have the opportunity to ask questions and provide public comment on applications and discussions following the petitioner's presentation and questions from the commission. To do so, please raise your hand in the participant function of the Zoom meeting platform. If you are calling in and cannot use the platform, you may raise your hand by dialing star nine. Our host will mute microphones of those not speaking and in order to preserve bandwidth and may need to turn off video with the exception of the commissioners, the host and the current applicant. I will call on each commissioner for comments on an application and then open the meeting for public comment. Once there are no more public comments, I will ask for a motion from the commission to continue, to approve, to approve with conditions or to reject. A second and conduct a roll call vote. Once the commission has acted on an application, the applicant is free to leave the meeting. We will do a roll call of the members of the commission. Kate Schartner. A Walter Clay. Here. Dennis Fiore. Uh, William Hewitt. Here. Catherine Mast. Henry, uh, sorry, Melinda Shamway. Paul Ware. Timothy Whitney. Here. Okay, so. Uh, I'm here. here. Sorry? I'm here. Hey, Kate? Yeah, I was Good. muted. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Uh, so we we have uh, uh, five members of the commission. So all members present uh, will be uh, voting members. So uh, we'll now then proceed to the first application, which is uh, uh, the new public the new here the first uh, public hearing, which is Boyd Boyton Brandon Buildings uh, Builders so One Fifty Five Monument uh, Street. North Bridge Monument Square Historic District to correct roof line on the east elevation, replace door on attached garage, and install windows on detached garage. Is the applicant here? Uh, I, I see Mr. Brennan there. Okay, I think you're muted, Mr. Brennan. Uh, ben Nickerson was going to uh, head the meeting. Can you okay. Hear? Yep, I'm right here. <laughs> oh, there you are. Okay. Well, welcome, uh, Ben. <laughs> if you if you would like to uh, present uh, what you're planning to. Yes. Um, yes. Uh, 155 Monument Street had received. Um, uh, approval um, some time ago and the the renovations are underway and um, we've come across a conflict um, in the east or the front elevation and it's it was caused by a draftsman's error um, the plans the plans, here's the plans, <laughs> show the, um, the original east elevation. And if you look on the left-hand side, you see a little bump out with a very shallow pitched roof with a short overhang as the original. And then it says the below, the approved drawing shows exactly the same roof on that bump out. Um, and if you look at, the other elevations, um, well, this is this is this is what we propose uh, for the uh, for the correction. But if you look on the ele elevations on the um, and the approved set, you see that there the roof um, is an extension of the main roof and has about a thirty eight inch overhang. 
I don't know that we have. Um, we have the elevations from the original um, uh, approval meeting. I don't know that we do. Uh, you didn't get them with this package, so they're not. I don't have them ready to to show. But I think that the other the ele the corrected elevation is sufficient. So this is the roof as it's indicated on the side elevation and also on the rear elevation of the approved set. And we're trying to make them consistent. We have the, the roof built in conformance with the rear elevation and the side elevation. And then the net result is this front elevation has got to reflect the way that roof um, was built. And so this elevation is a corrected front elevation that shows the roof as it really is built. So our proposal, our request is um, to approve this corrected front elevation uh, and substitute it for the um, previously approved but erroneous um, east elevation. Okay, so ba basically, what what you're uh, referring to, it's a, a change in the pitch of a roof. But now, one part that I don't understand from the renderings, it's that uh, in the approved um, rendering from March third, twenty twenty one, it seems that the little structure to the left on the east elevation has its own roof, and uh, and the proposed one then. Uh, that uh, singular roof disappears because it's part of the main roof of the of the whole structure. Is that correct? Yes, that's true. And, okay. Uh -huh. um, unfortunately, I, I guess it wasn't submitted that um, the uh, original approved elevations, um, which would go a long way towards explaining explaining this. Um, I'll try to locate them. It will take me a little while though. Do you want to uh, move on to another section and come back to this? Slide? Okay, well, sure. well, uh, what I'm trying to, to figure out is that uh, the, there's a, a plan uh, that says the original east elevation that, that has the little notch. There's an approved one which has some changes in the windows and things like that. And then there's a a, a proposed east elevation which lacks the the difference in the roof from the addition from the bomb from the left and uh the only thing i was wondering is that uh, if there's a um, a projection that shows that side of the roof so we can actually take a look at the, how that roof looks like so you know yes. if, if you were to rotate what it's in the screen right now 90 degrees towards the viewer, then you could see how it shows up on that side. But you know, it's uh, correct. Being correct, being uh, have, having all the information. Hey, Anne, I have those elevations. Good. Okay, can you put them up? Yep. One moment. Can everybody see that? Uh, I can see them. <laughs> Um, could we see the side elevation? Uh, there, there, there it is. Whoop. Oh, oh, back sorry. again. Back one. There. There we go. Okay. There's there's the side elevation, and on the existing, you can see the little bump out. Um, and on the proposed, you see the much larger roof that. Um, it covers that bump out, and the bump out is also extended. And you can see at the front, uh, to the right hand side of the bump out, you can see the the uh, the roof with the large overhang, and that, hey. <clears throat> that reflects the overhangs on the other existing main roof portions. Okay, but. Uh... What I can see here, it looks like it's much more than a draftsman's uh, error. You see, because you have changes in the in the windows, uh, there are a different number of windows, 
Um, just to clarify, Louise, uh -huh. so this was, uh, so when I say original, these were from a previously amended application that you had approved last year. Correct. So I just grabbed these to show the roof line. Okay. Um, so I'm, I'm uh, trying to figure out what is that we approved and what is the difference from, uh, uh, from what is being proposed, because that's what I thought is what this projection was right this um the, the the elevation on the top was the existing uh -huh. uh building and the elevation below was the proposed um elevation and part of that proposal was increasing that bump out and changing some of the window configurations and also changing the profile of the roof now, if you go back and you look at the front elevation, you'll see that that, that roof change was not incorporated. It shows, uh, on, again, on the top elevation on the left-hand side, it shows that smaller roof. And on the proposed elevation, it shows, again, the smaller roof when the side elevation indicates a much bigger roof. So, when this drawing was prepared, I think what they did is they just copied the existing elevation. They made some changes primarily to the um, adding a porch on the right hand side and changing the roof line over an existing porch, but they forgot to um, uh, incorporate the new roof that is shown on the side elevation. Okay, so what is the, the change that's being proposed right now? The, the change is to, uh, to um, amend this uh, proposed east elevation, showing the roof as it really is. Um, so has this been constructed already? Is that what you're saying? Yes. So the, so the, the proposed east elevation is something that has has been constructed you've gone through you're looking for retroactively to approve the drawing that would indicate that that is what has been built uh essentially yes um okay. but it's it would be impossible to build the roof that's shown on the approved side elevation and the approved rear elevation without making it consistent with the front elevation. So we have two elevations that show a roof one way, and we have one elevation that shows what that roof area, what that area looked like before the, um, before the additions were. Okay, so, so this is this is bookkeeping as much as anything, because you've, it, already, exactly. you've already built what exists. Well, let, right. let's not, let, not what was approved. Let, let's not get uh, out of line, uh, out of order. Yeah. Let's, let, let's have, uh, you see the, what well, I'm just trying for the record, you see, and I don't think that this is a, a big deal, but I think that it's important that we document exactly what is that we are approving and that's um, what we're doing. And I don't see any, any, any issues with the design itself, but I see a proposed East elevation dated 3-2023, uh, 2023. And that is in the documents that are in the website. Yeah. And uh, uh, that is what what I don't know if it's already built or or it's not already built, but it really doesn't matter. You see, this is what what the applicant wants to have, right? Am I correct? Number two, proposed east elevation, in twenty twenty three. That's what you will want to to have there, right? Um, the. Uh... Yes, not but not what's on the screen at the moment. Um, no, a, I'm, I'm I'm looking at the, the documents that are in the website. Yes, three twenty twenty three. Three twenty twenty three. Proposed this elevation uh, three twenty twenty three. That's what you want to, to to build, right? Right. That's our correct. Uh, and I'm not, I'm not going to get into the details that it's already been built or not. Yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and what uh, was approved is. Uh, something quite similar because I'm, I'm looking now at approved March 3, 2021. Yes. Uh, and uh, 
uh, if you can tell me what are the difference between the two <laughs> the science because you know, I, the, I, the, the difference is the roof over the bump out on the left hand side of those, of those okay elevations. okay because it's it's not really clear that that at least from the from that projection it uh, it's not it's certainly clear in the uh, what is on the screen right now, but uh, approach approved March 3, 2021, and proposed from 3, 2023, look pretty much the same. <laughs> but you're they, saying that they're different. <laughs> well, the only the, the only difference is the the is the roof line. Uh -huh. uh, if you look on the left hand side, you see the roof, and one of them has a, a yes a yes I little roof over that bump out. Exactly. And that that uh, is exactly what I was trying to get at. See, I was looking at the center of the of the drawing and I didn't realize that there's a little difference in the roof itself. Okay, well, that's exactly what what I was trying to to accomplish, you see, because now we know exactly what is that uh, we're talking about. So I will open the application for for discussion and and I'll ask uh, a team to start. Tim Whitney. Sorry about that. Um, I, uh, it, I'm a bit confused on the drawings. It's not clear to me. Uh, so th this elevate, I understand that the left, this is the street side we're looking at, correct, right now? Yes, that's the front. And, and the left-hand side did not show the right roof over that most left-hand part of the house, correct? That's correct. And so, the the south elevation of which I believe is the left hand side of the house, correct? Yes. Was that drawn correctly originally? Yes. And could we just bring that up the south elevation or whatever that's called? you you've got it labeled. And is that possible? I think Haley has that one. I'm sorry about the confusion. Haley, do you mind bringing that back up? Yep. One moment. Here we go. Thanks, Haley. Uh, so, is this? Uh, it would be another one. Another it's, not this, it's not this one, right? Yeah, it's. Uh, it's this. It's yes, this. there it is. OK, so the just I'll try to make this quick. So the bottom elevation is what is built and what was originally submitted, correct? That's correct. And it. I'm presuming if you went to the west elevation, it would look, it's all, as you said, it's drawn correctly in three elevations and not the fourth, the street elevation, correct? Right. And this one, it's on the right hand side. And you yeah, can see I, the bump out with a little roof. Got, I got you. So it, it was essentially approved with this roof. Uh, so I, I don't have any, I, I, I now understand it. Thank you for everybody for helping me here. Um, and um, I don't, uh, you know, the over, deeper overhang is looks correct, and it it it, it strikes me as a drafting error it, because it was drawn correctly in this elevation and the and the south elevation. So it was just the north elevation that was not the, the extension of that main roof was not picked up, as I understand it. Correct. Correct. Okay. Thank you. That's all I have. To say. Thank you very much, uh, Tim. Uh, Bill. No questions. Thank you very much, uh, Walter. I think that I finally understand uh, what this is. I'm not. Uh, I don't have great confidence in uh, in my thorough understanding of it, but I don't see anything, especially assuming that it has been built that way, and everybody seems to be happy with it. That is uh, objectionable. So I'm okay. Uh, thank you, Walter. Uh, Kate. Uh, no questions. No comments. I get it now. 
I don't have any questions. I recognize uh, uh, Tim Whitney for having explained the whole thing. <laughs> so I will open the, the application for public comments. Are there any public comments? Well, if there are no public comments, are there any public comments? If there are no public comments, I will ask the commission for a motion. I believe there's actually more to this application, is there not, Ben? Yes, there's two other items. That oh, I'm sorry. I am sorry. Well, then let's proceed. We figure the first one. I thought the word, okay, the one is a, a replaced door on a attached garage and installed windows on the detached garage. Okay, yes. then give us the narrative. <laughs> this, the... <laughs> and please, please combine the two. <laughs> <laughs> All right. This is the rear elevation of the house, and you can see uh, in the approved west elevation, there is a, 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 a door with a Z brace on it, and that's the existing door, which was just a sheet of plywood with some strapping as a Z, and um, the owner would like to change that to something a little more substantial, a uh, nine light uh, wood door, and you'd like to add a roof above it because wood doors deteriorate quite readily if they're not protected from rain. So that is the, that's the gist of the second item that we're requesting. And the third item is, uh, pertains to the detached garage building at the rear of the property. The approved elevations um, on the west and north elevations have no windows, and the owner would like to introduce some windows, um, two on the west elevation and one on the north, and they would be the same size as the windows that exist on the main house, which are about 32 by 56 inches for uh, sash size. And that is the three items that um, we were requesting action on tonight. Okay, so that is pretty clear. Then I'll ask for public comments on this part of the application. And then I'll go around uh, quickly again, and uh, we'll do it in the same order, the team. Uh, no, I think the improvement, the changes seem to improve everything. I have no comment. Thanks very much. Uh, Bill Hewitt? I had the same reaction as Tim. Uh, Walter? A quick procedural question. Um, this is all visible from the street? The, the, uh, the west and north elevations really are not. And of course, the rear elevation of the house with that door change is also not visible from the street. Uh, however, they are visible from the trail, uh, the reformatory trail, which is public a public way. Okay. I have no other question. Hey, Kate? I'd like to um, make sure the garage is used only for the parking of cars. I'm just wondering about lighting in the evening inside the garage that would be coming out, depending on how close it is to other buildings or visible. So is it is it a is it just for cars? The garage, um, or is I, it like a I can't remember what they were going to use it for. I guess that would that would be up to whoever buys the house in the end to decide how they use it. Uh-huh. Um okay. Uh so what would the lighting be in there now? Uh, I'm not sure what Mark has planned for lighting in there. Um, I suspect that uh, there'd be some general illumination, um, uh, no matter what it's used. So, um, well, if it's just used for cars, it's going to be kind of less frequent. But if it's becoming kind of a, I mean, I guess, like you said, we can't know. So that's that's a question of mine. And then the other one is um, with regards to the entrance. Uh, it's it's an improvement, but is it how far is it away from the main entrance? I'm just wondering if it's sufficiently subordinate to the main entrance. The well, there's two entrances on the rear elevation. One of them is on the right. You can see that comes out of uh, the kitchen, kind of a uh, 
dining area. Oh, right. Okay. And but this door comes out of the garage. So it's oh, okay. The second egress from the garage space. Okay. All right. Then they yeah, that. Sorry, I was I, I got mixed up. Okay. No, that's it. Thank you very much, uh, Kate. I, I only have one one question or comment. I assume that uh, what you are providing us right now, it's all that it's going to be built, including uh, the exterior lightning, lightning, because that, that would be part of our career, especially when you are making changes to the garage. Are you planning to put lights in the garage? In the garage or on the garage? On the exterior? Well, in the exterior of the garage, yeah. I'm not sure what was originally approved for lighting in the garage or the exterior. Okay. Uh, because uh, if anything, it's going to be uh, added or modified from the original application that would require also a discussion. So I think that we can proceed as long as uh, there are no changes uh, in the exterior light lighting of the garage. Um, if I can say something. Yes. The only light we're going to put on the outside of the garage was going to be over the front door of the garage, which barely can be, I don't think you can even see it from the street. And it was going to be up in the ceiling, a recessed light. So it, 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 you, you would see the light, but you wouldn't see the fixture. Okay. It, so that, that's an addition to that was not in the original application because, of course, the door was not in the original no, not application. That door. This is the door that's on the front of the detached garage. Okay, well, that, that's what I'm saying. Did, did we approve that originally? I'm not sure. But uh, well, code, we have to light every door. Okay, well, I let's... Uh, did, sorry, Luis, I believe that, you sure. did. I'm trying to track down the plans for that now. Because that exactly. was part of, yeah, one moment. Well, you know, it's a it's a procedural matter. It's just to say that if any uh, uh, ch uh, change is going to be from what was originally approved, then it requires a review by by the commission. But if nothing is going to be changed, then it's perfectly fine. But uh, if the current application involves installing a new light that is in the exterior, then we have to have uh, expects for that, and we need to have some. Um, uh, uh, review process well what i'd like to do is there's three doors there's one in the front of the detached garage one in the back of the um attached garage and one on the side of the house and what i'd like to have is a single uh recessed light in the ceiling okay and is, is that uh, written down in the application that uh, was either approved before or it's being considered now I, I think originally they had wall lights, but they, the wall lights, if you looked at them, they had conflicts because the doors, the garage doors were swinging and they would have hit the, hit the lights. Okay, so so if, if, the, if those changes in the lightning, lightning are not part of the application, then uh, the commission uh, will not have any documentation of those changes. So it will require uh, additional review. I believe that uh, we can uh, make a motion to a, to approve the application with uh, the condition that any additional lighting be submitted to the commission for review. And the commission will be happy to consider an administrative review as long as it's a minor change. But that needs to be documented, that needs to be in the, do in the uh, paperwork that rests with the commission. And that, that's the only point. Yes, I understand. Okay. All right. Are there any public comments? Mm -hmm. Okay. In the absence of public comments, I will ask for a motion from the commission to take into account that the motion should uh, include a, a provision for a additional lightning that uh, may or may not be installed by the applicant and that the, and if the applicant uh, decides to install uh, lighting as he has described, then he should um, contact the HDC for either administrative approval or full consideration of uh, the lighting plan. May I have a motion then?
Anybody wants to make a motion? <laughs> I think we're trying to figure out how to how to word it. I'll take a stab. Uh, I, I move that we approve this application for 155 Monument Street um, as submitted um, with the condition uh, uh, with the condition that if any lighting has been modified or changed from the original approved submission, um, the owner shall uh, come back with that uh, individual item about lighting for administrative or board approval. In seconds. I'll second that. All right, then uh, uh, we'll go around Kate. Aye. Walter? Aye. Will? William? Aye. Timothy? Aye. And I'm an I as well. So thanks very much. <laughs> Thank you. So it took a little longer than we expected, but it's uh, okay. Well, We'll go then to uh, uh, Barb Short, 601 uh, Lexington Road to install fencing. Uh, who is here? Uh, is the other one here? Yes. It's um, Shane Emmerich. Welcome, Sam Emmerich. Um, if you were to present to us, what is the plan? Oh. There. There. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Thank oh, okay. you. Hey, sorry. <laughs> it's 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 a disconcerting to not be sure where you are in the in the process. So yes, the um I am I'm here for the owner of the property, um, Barb Short at uh, 601 uh, Lexington Road, and she is requesting uh the um installation of a uh, aluminum fence on the part and part of the lot in the rear of the property these are not her property those are just pictures of the fence this is a sketch of how the fence would be at the rear of the property and then when you look see look at the plot plan um that probably becomes a little clearer uh, pictures of the front of the house, which um, the, the fencing really isn't visible from the, it's very minorly visible from the road. Okay. And do, do we have a, a projection from above? So we can see what's the relationship. Yeah, that plot plan. Yeah. Perfect. Okay. And the material of the fence is uh, aluminum. Is it painted aluminum? aluminum? It's, powder, it's black powder coated aluminum. Yes. Black, okay. It's black. Okay. And it doesn't have to be painted because it's powder coated, right? Correct. Yeah. Okay. Well, it seems to be very straightforward. <laughs> so <laughs> I'll ask uh, the members of the commission for comments. Uh, Sorry, with the Kate. Is Kate there? <laughs> Sorry about that, everybody. Um, <laughs> it's four and a half feet tall, I believe. Correct. And that's it's behind the house. It's all right. So that um, that kind of clears our height. Uh, so yeah, height guidelines. Um, will, it's, will there be any gate besides it connecting to the house? There are three. There are three gates. If you go back to the um, plot plan, uh, I, you, I think I've noted where they all are. So there's one um, there on the right hand side, mm -hmm. or um, down in there's a patio area there, and it's, okay, right, and then there's there's a path from the driveway and that there's a four foot gate there. And then there's a five foot gate and it looks just like the fence, but to allow um, lawn mowing equipment to get into the yard um, there on that angle on the left hand, on the left hand side. Yep. So there's a five foot gate with a four and a half foot fence. It's five foot wide. 
Oh, okay. They've been five sorry. feet. Sorry, it's a, it's a, yeah, it's a five. Oh, I see now sixty inches. So, sorry, my my computer's not. <laughs> which um, allows getting the right uh, more in. Um, Got it. Okay. No further questions. Thank you. Thanks very much, Kate. Uh, Walter. Uh, any particular reason why it's um, black powder coated aluminum? It's it's kind of the least visible, most sort of non. Um, just non-aggressive visually. Uh, it, it does the least to sort of block the views out of the out of the fenced part of the yard to the rest of the property um, towards the rear, which is a hill that goes up fairly steeply, and then um, to the right, which the left hand is is planting, so it's kind of winding through bushes and shrubbery there. Mm -hmm. um, the right hand side is open and there's a large expanse. I, I don't really know what the uh, story is around the, the location of this house, but it literally is right on the property line. Um, and there's a fairly large lawn area to the right of the house that uh, she's been given use of, but not to construct permanent structures on. So visually wanting to just keep it pretty low impact with its primary purpose being a place to allow her to uh, let her dog out as she um, is actually not going to be able to personally walk her dog for uh, several more months um, because of the uh, cancer treatment she is in the midst of. A large dog? Uh, no, it's, not. <laughs> uh, it's about um, 14 inches high. <laughs> dog barks at me regularly when I'm when I'm there, so it's not it's not a lot. Well, the four or four feet would contain something substantial. Yeah. Uh, my only comment on that, I understand all that, is uh, uh, maybe considering it being uh, green, if we have the uh, the universe of powder coat colors uh, to choose from, might be even less intrusive than black, but hardly deal breaker. Um. Yeah, yeah, I could I could inquire on that. There, it only comes in two stock colors, white and black. Yeah. So to do that, we would need to actually send all the all the sections out and have them re uh, powder coated. I understand, which is um, quite an effort. Having powder coated things in the past. Yes. <laughs> very good. I'm I'm satisfied. Thank you. Uh, thanks very much, Walter. Uh, uh, Bill. No questions. Thank you so much, uh, Timothy. Uh, I don't have any questions. Okay, I don't have any questions either. Uh, this uh, barely, you can barely see it from the street. Only see it in a couple of places, so I don't think it's an advantage, and certainly helps the dog. Any public comments? Okay, in the absence of uh, public comment, I'll ask for a motion uh, on this application. I vote that we move to approve the application for 600 Lexington Road as submitted. A second? Second. Tim? Aye. Uh, Bill? Aye. Walter? Aye. Kate? Aye. And I'm an aye as well. Well, thanks very much. Congratulations. Thank you very much. The, the and, uh, very pleased. We will proceed now to the third uh, new public here, which is uh, Pat Nelson, 1300 Main Street, the Church Street Historic District, to install a shed at the Concord Children's Center. Is the applicant here? Yes, I am. I'm there here. you are. Yeah. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Um, basically, I'm here because we want to add a shed to the Children's Center for our strollers. And um, I wanted to, before we uh, went too far down the path, I wanted to make sure there was there weren't uh, recommendations that would be made by the HDC because we are in the in the district. Um, I've uh, I don't know if you want to see the PowerPoint that I've got. I have it, if you want to share the screen with me. Sure, please go ahead. Okay. Um, can you see my screen now? No. Not yet. Not yet. <laughs> so maybe, I don't know if I can. Oh, here we go. Yeah. Here we go. <clears throat> All right. There we go. 
So basically we're uh, wanting to store strollers. We're adding infant toddler capacity to the school. So we will have more babies that will be needing strollers. Um, this is a front view from Church Street of the school. This is the main entrance of the school. If you um, can see the little corner, the little cutout there on the uh, left-hand side of the building, that is where we wanna tuck that uh, shed into. Um, it would basically be taking the place of this lilac bush here um, and be uh, an eight by 10 shed, um, about nine and a half feet tall. Uh, here is the, um, the plan of um, the Concord Children's Center. This is main, uh, I don't know if you can see my pointer or not. I can, but I doubt if you can. We can see it. We can you see can? It, yeah. Okay, great. So this is Main Street. Back here is the Harvey Wheeler building. And this is Church Street. So that view you are looking at is from Church Street. And this is the, the little area that we want to put the, the shed in. Um, this is the shed that we've identified as looking probably the most like our built existing building. Um, we could get it built uh, of the same material that the existing building is and paint it the same color. Um, this is the Reed's Ferry Shed. Uh, it's called an American classic. Um, and there, there weren't a lot of specifications on the website, but I added, you know, it's, it's a classic shed design with a low profile roof pitch. Um, so, uh, it's an off the shelf thing. We don't have an architect, we're not, uh, but we, we do need some space for these strollers. So we've come to the HDC to see if there are any barriers to doing this. Okay. Um, so basically the place of the shed, it's in the back of the building. It's, it's on the church street side of the, the church street side of the building. Yeah. Uh, so we have, two, we have two main entrances to the building. One is between the building and our, our building and Harvey Wheeler, and one is Church Street. Um, and then uh, there's a parking lot in the back and families come into the school this way. Okay. And the, the, in, in the plans uh, submitted to the HTC, there's a, a, a site plan that shows an X where the shed would be, right? Yeah, there was an X where the shed is, roughly. I was not able to do a terribly professional job of that, but I wanted to try to show you the location. It's right okay. here. Uh, and you don't have any, uh, well, there's a um, fairly detailed plan that doesn't show actually the location of the shed itself, right? No, because we don't we don't have any plans. We don't have any plans. We Before we went down the path of, having um, plans developed for the shed, I wanted to make sure there wasn't gonna be a barrier to putting a shed in that location. Uh, well, you know, I think that we certainly can go into a number of discussions, but one thing that we will need before we approve this application, it's a, a, a formal siting of the shed and precise measurements and so forth. I think that you are you're, uh, saying that you're gonna use and off the shelf, shelf. Uh, um, um, so um, that probably will be available, but we would like to see um, a site plan that shows the shed itself. Um, and again, we can make an, an initial approval, but this will be a requirement for having a, 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 a formal approval of the application. Okay. okay, so let's uh, open the presentation for discussion. I'm going to start again with uh, him. Yeah. Um, I mean, it's, it's, you know, it's off Main Street, and it seems to be at a pretty unobtrusive structure. It's just sitting right at the corner of the building, sort of smudged up against the, the existing oh. building. Um, I'm just wondering, is there, if it could be, uh, you know, it's 
I know it's going to be sort of similar to the existing building. It's a nice, but it's, the existing building is a nice looking building. And um, could this shed be just pulled away from the existing building a little bit more so it sits on its own or tucked around the back, moving it away from Church Street a bit more? I'm sure there's lots of functional reasons, but that's my that's my concern. Is just could it be could it be just moved away from the corner so it's not uh, intruding on that nice elevation? Right. Um, we're, we're trying to avoid taking up uh, any uh, taking up as little of the play space as possible. Um, there is a uh, a bike path that runs around the open space around the. Um, the, the playground, the back part of the school. So this really would be occupying a space that's occupied by a tree and, and dirt now, rather than occupying the um, actual play space. Um, so we're, we, our goal is to, to try to make it as, as um, least uh, invasive as possible. Which is, but it will have to be at least there. There has to be three feet around the shed to um, to place the shed. Uh, so there, there would be that. Any other comments, uh, uh, Tim? No, uh, I mean, well, I, I guess just tied onto that. I think we we do sort of need to know what it looks. You know, which way does the gable go on the shed? It's part mm -hmm. of Louise's question of how is this sited. So that we really, since it is a structure, you know, what does it look like relative to the existing building? It's very small, but it is a structure that's basically like an addition to the existing building. So uh, maybe I'll just I'll I'll stop there and pass it to the next uh, committee member. Uh, thanks for thanks very much, uh, Tim uh, William. Uh, I had the same question of, of uh, is it going to be perpendicular to the. Uh, uh, long axis of the current building or parallel to that. Um, the second is um, whether the roof line, the, the angle uh, of that shed is consistent with the existing building or is it is it just too shallow? Um, and then third, uh, whether there's an option to not have vinyl siding. Yes, there is an option not to have vinyl siding. Yeah, that, that's for sure. Um, and um, it would be perpendicular to the building That's for access to the strollers from the from the toddler playground. So um, the, the entry door would be to the right of this photograph. So um, you know, this is not my skill set, but the the entry door would be uh, parallel to the fence, so that teachers could come could put the could slide the strollers in back into the shed and pull them out uh within inside the toddler playground so the door would be on the left hand side i'd approach it walking from the left side of this photograph or the right side from the right side i think the right side okay yeah thank you hey thanks for the walter um uh, for clarity tim when you say Put it in the back. Are you talking about uh, the uh, what we see in the foreground here? Is that considered the back of the building or the front of the building in terms of? The yeah, good. Um, I guess I was referring to away from the intersection of Church and Main, which I, I think is the most prominent view so, of this. So behind what we see is the building from this. Yeah, to the to the uh, left of, in this photograph and back. You know, something that's less visible from the main Church Street intersection. Yeah, no, I, I understand. I'm, I just uh, it occurred to me there might be a difference in nomenclature for yeah, thanks. For us looking at the picture and what the school considers front and back. Yeah, so you're you're right. This is the this is the front. It's right on Church Street. It also is where our toddler infant and toddler playground and our infant toddler classrooms are. So, from an operational point of view to load your three or four infants or toddlers into a stroller, we, we would like it would be most convenient and uh, programmatically most successful uh, in, in this location. Do you think that you may need a second shed at some point if you expand the program? I, no, I don't think so. We're we're this is we've we have a um, 
a plan for three infant toddler classrooms and three preschool classrooms. What we're expanding right now, we have two infant toddler classrooms and we're creating a third one, but there's not enough room in the building to go for it more okay. children. I'm, I'm just uh, thinking that if you ended up putting another shed on that would change entirely the um, the advantage of tucking it into that corner where the, where the tree is. Um, I Do you have access to what would be the rear uh, facade of this building from this perspective? So I don't have a photo of it, but the rear of the building um, faces directly onto uh, the Harvey Wheeler building. Right. And we, we currently share the playground with the carousel school. So anything that we put back there would have to be um, amenable to the carousel preschool, which is the rec departments. And aside from the fact that it would be very inconvenient to get the strollers in and out from there mm -hmm. for, the, for the infant and toddler classrooms, there's not enough room back there to, I think, to add another shed. There already is a shed back there that we use for uh, children's outdoor toys. On what would be the rear side of the building? On the, uh, what would be the rear side of the building, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I mean, my comment is I'm, I'm not a fan of that shed in that position um, based on the fact that it is, uh, the reason you're here is it is in an historic district. And the convenience of putting it in place of the lilac right there, I understand all of those things, but it still strikes me as being uh, more intrusive in that location than it might be in some other. Um, and I would like to know uh, what it might look like and what the uh, problems would be associated with it, putting it in less um, in a less obtrusive uh, position in relation to the building. Okay. I don't think we're looking at approving a uh, final location uh, right. right now, so it, there's time to think about that. And that's my comment. Thank you very much, Walter. A. Kate? Uh, I agree with what my, some of the other commissioners have said already. Um, I'm uh, dubious about kind of tucking it right in to the existing building. I know you don't have a huge budget, or I'm guessing you don't and want to you know, not engage an architect, but <laughs> you guess can, we at least need to see some sort of sketches. I also think, um, just as an aside, I think Reed Ferry's only wood option is the is the hor vertical boards. I don't. I think their their uh, horizontal siding is vinyl. I'm not sure they have proper wood clapboard. So that's just something to think about. Okay. And um, which would argue even more for um, not tugging it in somewhere. Tugging it in also may compromise the current structure or it, you know, when it's wet or leaves build up there. I mean, but anyway, um, it's, yeah, it's just hard to envision it right now. Uh, thank you, Kate. Um, see, I'll, I'll echo my, the comments of my fellow commissioners. I think that uh, it, we are lacking uh, precise sighting of the shed. And uh, I believe that that, uh, that is essential for, for the commission to, to consider all the implications. And I think that the applicant has heard some perspectives about the location of the shed and uh, whether that location uh, satisfies more or less some of the historic references that this site provides. Uh, I also heard that there are um, options on uh, the shed material, whether it is vinyl or it is some other type of uh, material. So uh, my impression is that uh, uh, I would prefer to see a more detailed uh, uh, part of the application in terms of the siting. And I think that uh, the applicant uh, may entertain all the options in terms of the orientation of the access to the shed in, and even the actual location that's being proposed. But I don't believe that uh, what we have right now allows us as a commission to make a determination. So uh, my inclination would be to continue the application until we obtain that information. Having said that, I will open the, the discussion for public comments.
Any public comments? In the absence of public comments, I'll ask uh, the commission to for a motion to continue to approve approved with conditions or to reject the application of 1300 Main Street. I'll move we continue the application of 1300 Main Street. A second? Second. Okay, Kate. Oh, aye. Hey, Walter. <clears throat> Do we know what we are continuing it to just next meeting? No, we, we, we're continuing the application. I think that we explained the applicant uh, and uh, administratively we'll uh, make sure that the applicant understand, uh, has a information about right. what is required and why, why it's being continued. Yeah, uh, you are an I. Uh, Bill? I. Uh, Tim? I. And I'm an I as well. So we we'll, shall look forward to see you uh, in the next meeting, which uh, I don't know what it's a uh, June what? Haley, help me. <laughs> uh, June June first. June first. So, so if I may um, just respond, thank you very much. This has been very helpful. Um, this was really what I was really looking for was some indication of if, if this would be a problematic application. I don't know that we will have all our ducks in a row by your next meeting, but what I'd like to do is to take it um, as this has been continued and when we when we do have a better plan to submit that we would submit it once again. Okay, well, there are a, there are a number of options uh, here. One of the options, uh, you know, once an application is made, uh, I'll go back a little bit to see the process that you're describing, something that uh, we, we have a, a system for, which is that we have informal discussions and applications as part of the other business parts of uh, the commission. But once we have a formal application, then we're forced by law, actually. Uh, oh, okay. To make a, a motion and to and to determine those four things that I mentioned, we are approved, approved with conditions, rejected, or uh, or continue. So, in this case, uh, obviously, what we want to do is to have a, a more developed plan. So it's a typical place where we can continue it. But of course, you as an applicant, you have the option of um, asking for a, a continuance. And actually, when the time comes. Uh, which has to be by definition in two weeks or for the next meeting. If you are not, if you don't believe that you are ready, then you can ask for uh, another continuance. And th there's a, a limited number of continuances that we can give. But that, you know, the commission is very flexible in trying to make sure that the applicant has time to do everything. <laughs> so I don't see a problem with that. See, so if you don't think that, that you have time for you first, to, to have a new application, then just send a letter uh, to the to the town to the senior town planner requesting a continuance, and uh, we'll be happy to entertain it. If you decide to withdraw the application, the only problem with that is that you have to go again through the whole process and pay forty dollars. <laughs> okay, right. <laughs> <laughs> Understood. Thank you. Okay, so. I lost track. Uh, we approved continuing the application, right? Yes. Okay, perfect. Um, so we uh, may or may not see you on June 1st. May or may not. Thank you very much. I appreciate your time. You are most welcome. Thank you. All right. Uh, we're now, we'll start with the continued public hearings. And the first one is the First Parish Unitarian Church, 26 Lexington Road. The American Mile Historic District, uh, the access uh, accessible entry addition to the Wright Tavern. Uh, the application uh, has still a pocket park and other associated landscape changes. And this has been continued from uh, two or th uh, three meetings before. And uh, I uh, acknowledge that we had a very uh, good site visit this morning for which the commission extends uh, its gratitude to the applicant. And uh, I will ask who's here for the applicant. Let's see. So Luis, I'm here, Peter Nobley. I'm speaking for the, the Wright Tavern Legacy Trust or part of, we're part of First Parish. Well, and welcome I'm, Mr. Nobley. Thank you, sir, thank you. <laughs> nice to see you again. And I'm joined by Lynn Spencer of the Spencer Preservation Group, who is our architect and Tom Wilson, who's the chair of our board. 
And uh, thank you again for joining us this morning, those of you who are there. Um, and I have a, an updated presentation. Uh, uh, Haley, can I just share a screen? Yeah. Okay to do that. All right. Well, I don't, and I know that some of you, I don't want to go through this in, in excruciating detail because I know a lot of you have seen this before. Can you see the screen here? Yes. Okay. So um, we are here tonight. We're not seeking a final approval because, of course, we're not presenting construction documents. We are presenting essentially a schematic design that has received what I would call an enormous amount of feedback from various parties. Uh, for an accessible entrance on the Monument Square uh, Main Street side of this building. So just a very brief overview, the Wright Tavern, it's a late uh, 18th century vintage. It's been, uh, it was gifted to First Parish in the 19th century. It's been continuously owned and operated by First Parish uh, for since then. It has had a number of lives. Uh, has lived a number of lives, pardon me, and has uh, undergone what I would consider uh, a number of handyman carpenter renovations over the years. So uh, it has a lot of um, some original detailing, but much of it has been uh, distorted or changed over time. Uh, but it is on the National Historic Register. It's a, it's a very important building in Concord, and it's a very important building uh, to us at First Parish. So the Legacy Trust has been charged with uh, uh, operating and, and maintaining the building into the future. And as part of that operation, we're proposing an accessible uh, entrance on the Monument Square side. So the building will not only be more accessible to the public, but will have two uh, accessible means of egress. So I'll just go through these uh, very quickly. There's some historic photos here. I think I've got control of the screen. Um, you've seen many of these photographs. Photos of this building always tend to be of the east and north elevations, as if the other side is the back, which I think as we discussed this morning, this building really no longer has a back because it's all fronts. But this is what people see when they think of the Wright Tavern. Um, there's a general location. We were there this morning. Uh, you can see it. It's in a fairly prominent place in downtown Concord. And just some context of the area. There, there are all kinds of different conditions around the building. Uh, the upper left hand uh, etching from 1839 shows how the grade has changed. You can see. Uh, Main Street used to be a lot lower than it is now. It's been graded up over time. And just some pictures of the existing building. So the area that we're considering for this uh, new entrance is right. Can you see my cursor? Yes. Yes. So this is a, this is a covered stair that was built sometime in the 20th century. It is considered not, um, uh, uh, contributing and not a contributing historic feature to the building doesn't mean it's not important, but it's not considered to be, uh, let's call it as precious as parts of the uh, rest of the building. Uh, as, as we've mentioned before, it's had a number of additions and modifications over the years. Um, I'm just going to go a little closer there. The, the, the white object on the right is called the wayside pulpit. That's part of First Parish. And this is all First Parish property, so it's considered part of our campus. So just a couple of other context photos. This is in the early 20th century. You can see that the that stair had not been built yet, the little covered stair. There's a door down here. You can see where the grade has been raised up. That door and the window beside it still exist, and we're, we're in, intending to essentially restore them. And then you can see in about in the 60s, by the 60s, this little covered uh, addition had been built over the stair. So a couple of floor plans. This is an existing first floor plan. You can see the area in consideration in uh, the dashed area. Uh, it, the, the little addition comes out about four feet and is about 12 feet long and really just encloses a little 
uh, passageway down to the basement uh, entering through that stair. So what we're essentially doing with this project is removing that and replacing it with a slightly larger and more contemporary uh, vestibule. Here's the existing south elevation. You can see the area we're talking about. Uh, it's a, a sort of quirky little covered um, shed. There's, it, it doesn't actually meet the building on the bottom. You've, you've seen from the site visit. Uh, so it's removable, if you will. And here's the existing west elevation. So just another view of that uh, view from the Colonial Inn. This is actually a model in the Concord Public Library. It's a little diorama that shows the old situation behind the Wright Tavern. So it was a working barn or working uh, farm for many years. <coughs> So the proposed addition, now the, the drawings you had seen before essentially took this same shape, this, uh, this small box here that we're talking about. Now, this is about 11 feet by 18 feet. We had formerly thought of bringing the, the new structure all the way to the existing um, uh, west elevation, but with some good feedback, we've pulled it back and allowed that existing door and the windows above to remain. So essentially the vestibule now allows the existing original fabric to, to read through behind it. That's the, the sort of goal of this vestibule. So one level up, it contains a stair up and a lift. The lift will go from grade down to the basement and up to the first floor. And we're considering a simple glazed, uh, structural uh, glazed addition, butt glazing, minimal framing, uh, standing seam roof, which again skirts underneath the existing roof. And the idea is to let the, let the addition read as much as possible um, through the, the back of the addition. The glass will obviously be transparent, so it's not visible in this view, but you'll see the elevator and stair and the building uh, fabric continue behind. And then from the west elevation, you can see this, this grade cut is a little bit uh, uh, ahead, but you can see the door and the window uh, existing on the west elevation that would be restored. This again is a very simple shed form that um, at, on, on the one hand, it speaks to the older additions on the building. On the other hand, it's intentionally contrasting to the existing architecture. We're trying to listen to the Secretary of Interior standards there. And there's the existing view, and this is a rendering. And again, it's a schematic rendering. We haven't chosen the glazing system yet. But this will give you an idea of what we're proposing. So again, we're allowing the building fabric uh, on the west to slide through and behind. This little shed piece uh, we're including partly because uh, there's a headroom. I mean, it's difficult to get up here uh, without uh, additional headroom there. So the and the the other thing I should describe, which we haven't finished yet, is a landscape plan. But the idea is really to have a very minimal patio here, which is really more of a gathering place for docents as much as a place to sit. Uh, the path, a path would uh, connect to the existing, this is actually a, an asphalt path right now. We haven't quite figured out, we were talking this morning, there's an existing entrance here from the sidewalk. So I think we'll, we'll probably in the final plan keep that and maybe connect it to a a little bit of a side path here, but it does go right into the side of the addition. So we have to have our landscape architect figure that out. And this is really just a, a conceptual view of what we're thinking. So this is again, the floor plan of the tavern. Here's the proposed addition. Here's what would be a patio and some kind of a connector here. You can see that existing uh, uh, path is right there. So we'd have to figure out a way to come around. The grading is gonna be a little tricky there, but we would come back to you when we have a, a, a final landscape plan. So the idea is here to present to you our concept, our schematic design, and see uh, if you have any thoughts, what we would hope for would be a, 
an approval with conditions so that we can continue and evolve the design. And we'd come back to you uh, each time we have additional details on the project. And that's Lynn, did I, how did I do there? I don't know if I spoke too much. And I think that you did all right. <laughs> I, think, I think you did a great job. Thank you very that's, much. That's and we're all ready opinion. to go. <laughs> okay. uh, all right. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Peter. Um, I'm going to ask, uh, I'm going to start the, the discussion with the same usual suspects. So I will start with our architect, uh, Tim Whitney. <laughs> Okay. Um, uh, this is a very, this is a very tough project and problem. I think that you and we are faced with, and um, I'm not. I just have concerns about it. I guess, and um, the, as I understand it, this is going to become the primary public entrance to the building, um, correct? That's right. correct. And what is inside that glass box is essentially an a lift, not to say an elevator, a lift and a stair, mm -hmm. and nothing else, correct? Correct. correct. And, you know, a, a highly visible, we all know that that's a highly visible spot from Main Street and from Concord, and it's, you know, this is a premier building in Concord at a premier site. And um, I just, I have to question the nature of putting an addition of this type on this building. I understand the accessibility, I understand the circulation, um, but it's an enormously precious piece of architecture enclosing essentially a lift and a stair. Um, and as you pointed out, when the lights are on at night, that's what you will see. Uh, I know you'll we'll see some original structure. So, that, so that's concern. I just that's a basic concern. Number one. Number two is it's nestled right up into the roof slopes of the existing building, standing seam next. You know, it's a it's an uncomfortable marriage of forms wedded together and not pulled apart. Um, and uh, I, I have concerns about, uh, I have thoughts about the landscape, but I don't, it doesn't seem like that's really where we are. We're, we're talking about trying to solve this problem, or you're trying to solve the problem of how to put this required accessible entry in. But uh, uh, I appreciate the importance of this location and the need for accessibility. That's, that's all understandable. Uh, but what this really should look like and how it should integrate, I, I have concerns about the form and the materials and the, uh, the fact that it, it looks a little bit like, I, I don't think people are gonna quite know what to make of it, and yet it's only in closing, it's, it's closing functional circulation space. It's not per se a lobby, not that we wanna create, create a lobby, but that, I think I'm gonna stop there. This is a, a lot of iteration that we're, is the stuff we're gonna to discuss tonight. Um, but I want to I want to stop there and move to the next person. Thank you very much, uh, Tim. Uh, Bill, uh, I'd be hard pressed to to add uh, uh, to that discussion, so I'll pass. Thank you so much, Bill. A uh, Walter, I'm uh, finding myself constantly torn uh, about this. And the last uh, time that we looked at this. Uh, there, I, I, my sense is that nobody on the commission has a very uh, clear um, preference one way or the other for this or for something else that in the broadest sense. And I'm, so I'm certainly describing how I feel about it. Um, if I understand that having the lift and having the stairs uh, right up against the existing building functionally is where they need to be in order to do that. If you're doing that, then you need to have something that encloses it in close proximity uh, like this. At that point, uh, honoring uh, guidelines, I am uh, in favor of having it look as, in some ways, as aggressively different from the existing structure as possible. 
uh, in order to absolutely make it certain, like, make it clear that it's not uh, part of the original structure. But then I have a second component to all this, or a third component to all this, uh, which is this is all predicated on access and is predicated on there being access into the building and the building being used for something. Uh, one of the questions that nobody seems to have addressed is, well, does the building have to be used uh, for something uh, there? And if the building's not used in a way that requires access, then it doesn't need to be added to in this way, which is, I think, potentially extremely problematic. I mean, it might be just fine. Um, so I can go on and on, and obviously I'm torn about this, as I said. Uh, it, it, it can certainly go in this direction and be there. Um, I've had a couple of conversations about uh, the IMP influence, I think that came up the last time around. You know, could this structure be pulled away from the existing building? If that's the case, then you can't have the stair and the lift in the same position. That's the argument against it. Um, the note that I wrote to myself, and I'll finish up in a second, is you know, how do you get this uh, addition to the building to say clearly history? You know, and it doesn't. And that reinforced by my visit this morning, I look at it. And if I did not know it was the right tavern, I did not know I was in Concord, I did not know uh, its historic significance, I wouldn't have a clue as to what happened here or why I should care about it, uh, other than uh, you know, nice piece of uh, modern architecture stuck on an old red house. Yeah, I'm going to stop there too. That's just part of my concerns. Thank you very much, Walter. Uh, Kate. Uh, I share similar concerns to my prior commissioners. Um, I understand your access, your accessibility uh, needs, and wanting to address them, um, but. Uh, you know, I used to work in museum development for years, and I would watch organizations spend a lot of um, time and money to add on a visitor center, thinking it would improve accessibility. In some cases, it did, and in some cases, it didn't. But, you know, the going to a place, you know, people are, I don't know, I feel like, like Walter said, um, you know, does it need to be more accessible? Who are these people who are going? That's a separate issue. But, um, I'm, yeah, I'm, the idea of having a staircase illuminated at night in such a visible place is not appealing to me. That's, I, I, I won't say more because I'm still, I have a lot of jumbled thoughts. Thank you very much, Kate. Um, uh, first of all, I want to recognize uh, the applicants and the architects because this is probably the most difficult architectural problem that can ever be conceived. If you were to throw these two to, to the students at the Graduate School of Design at Harvard, they would all uh, consider that it is an unfair attack on their um, intellectual and, and probably physical integrity because it's very, very difficult. But uh, on the other hand, I, I think that there's a problem here that we must solve. And uh, the applicant uh, has um, uh, framed this problem into an issue of accessibility. And I want to remind the commission that it's not our role uh, to question the motives of the applicant in terms of providing one service or another. It's our role to determine whether what the applicant is proposing is consistent with the historic references that are already existing in town. So I, I will circle back then to the comments that, uh, that uh, Tim, Timothy made. Uh, and uh, he stated initially that uh, for the architectural requirements to be fulfilled and for the historic reference to be maintained, this structure needs to be very different from the other one. And I think that the applicant has accomplished that fairly well. Then he mentioned something about the roof line, and I wanted to talk for a second about the roof line because that was the in the previous application that was the the detail that was most um, 
distracting to me and that one that I really uh, did not like. So now I have a bias against anything that connects one roof with the other roof. So I, I had to recognize that that's an issue for me. And then I very much like the um, the the, uh, the narrative of a theme of the uncomfortable marriage of forms, see? And I think that this is exactly the problem that we have here. I think that the form that we currently have is so much better than the other one. <laughs> Uh, but on the, you know, the other hand, is it still a bit of a forced marriage? Other commissioners have mentioned the requirements of illumination, of what's going to be seen there, et cetera, et cetera. So uh, taking the liberty of uh, making uh, design suggestions, I will, uh, I will not make design suggestions uh, uh, per se, but I will mention that there are other uh, perspectives that may be taken in order to create a structure that is compatible with the history and that addresses all the issues that have been mentioned to the commission, and which is the fact that we have a structure from 1753, which is the right tyrant, from which in 1960 an addition was uh, made, which uh, uh, there's a consensus that, that it's an extraneous structure that can be removed without any loss of uh, the historic references. And then we have a, a, a cap room or something that was added in 1926, which uh, by virtue of the passage of time and basically the past hundred years, now has become by itself an historic reference. But we have to recognize that something that was uh, it, it built uh, basically 175 years after the uh, original structure was made doesn't have the same uh, weight or recognition as a historic reference as the rest of the tavern has. So from my perspective, one consideration would be to have the new structure centered not on the back of the house as it is right now, but on this uh, tap room of a newer addition. And uh, I don't want to go much further than that because I, I don't want to uh, become a, an architectural critic or anything of that sort. But, but I believe that uh, uh, one of the issues that, that are being presented, uh, especially from TMD, you know, the marriage of the forms, uh, the roof line, et cetera, could be addressed by centering the structure in the other room. I'm sure that there are all kinds of uh, limitations uh, but again, this project will never be a perfect project. This project will be a whole set of compromises and uh, centering the new structure in the the proposed structure in the in the newer addition of the right of the right tower may be the solution to that. Uh, but I want to reiterate that this is a very very difficult architectural problem, and that uh, I commend the. the the applicant for for tackling it because somebody had to do it better do than than somebody else. <laughs> Having said that, I'll uh, uh, open the discussion for public comment. Um, any public comments? <laughs> yeah, me. Uh, Nancy Nelson. <laughs> um, uh, can you hear me? I think I'm unmuted. Um, yeah. I'm we're right, here. Thank you. Good. Right now, I'm speaking for myself, but I wanted I wanted to say that the current the current modification, um, while it retains the same number of glass doors and increases the number of glass or the amount of glass on the end, um, I would say that it is uh, constructed. It's a curtain wall construction. So in the future, if it doesn't work. It can be removed easily. It does not compromise the core of the right tavern. It it um, adjoins a more modern addition. Um, and I think what um, I wrote, what Tim Whitney said, um, agree that it's it's a very tough project. But um, I don't know why you would highlight the staircase and the um, the lift. Um, and I also share the issue about the roof connection. I think it would be so much better 
I don't know, maybe it could be sunk a bit. <laughs> There's going to be regrading anyway. Um, so um, I would agree with the many people who said that the roof connection seems awkward. Uh, I think a new structure on another part of, of the National Historic Landmark um, would not would not answer the problem of accessibility. And so I think that's that's a positive about this. So that's that's all I have to say right now. And this is a really tough problem. And thanks to everybody who's working so hard on it. Uh, thank you very much, uh, uh, Nancy. I see uh, Melissa Saffield. Hi, thank you. Um, yeah, so Nancy and uh, Alan and I were there this morning. Um, I, I just want to say to the folks at Wright Tavern, thank you for hearing us at the last couple meetings uh, because we were very, very opposed to the original or the other design that they came up, and particularly the the rather aggressive landscaping that they had in mind and the patio. So they've cut all that back. I think the rendering that you're looking at now from what Peter said this morning is not at all accurate. It's much less than this. So I just wanna commend them for listening to us. Um, I share what Nancy has said. I also thought this this morning, um, Peter, that you indicated that one of the advantages of the glass wall, curtain wall, as Nancy suggests, um, is you could see your efforts to and I, I, I don't want to use the word restore, but you've kind of uh, repaired, rehabilitated the part of the original structure. And you could see that through the glass wall. If I am I, did I misunderstand that? A little bit. Yeah, you can you can sort of see it here. But, um, I, but I would say, why would you want to light it up at night? I, I agree. Why would you want to emphasize just basically it's a lift and a stairway? So I would challenge the lighting for evening lighting. Um, but I, I, I really go back to the fact that I think you've listened to us. Um, I was rather pleased to see that you had really uh, reduced the scope of this project considerably. Um, I do hear what Mr. Whitney said, uh, and I, I think this is a really tough problem. Nobody wants. Nobody wants. I we. I don't think any of us really wanted you to do anything to this building, but we appreciate the fact that you uh, would like to open it as a museum structure um, and you need to be able to get people in fairly. You need to be accommodate handicap accessibility issues. Um, so I'll stop there, but I, I know this is just part of an ongoing back and forth. So thank you. You're welcome. Thanks, for, thanks very much, Melissa. Um, the next one is, uh, is that Nancy Fusella Lee or uh, who has it? Yes, can you hear me? Yes, go ahead. Hi, I'm also a member of the Historic Commission, um, and I, I'm not going to waste time. I, I think that everyone, I, I like the comments that everyone else has made, and I, and I agree with, with everyone's comments. And, I, and again, whatever I say is, like, um, is not a criticism of the architects. I completely understand and agree that it's, this is a really tough problem um, to solve. One thing that hasn't been uh, said is that the way that the building is, that the, the massing of the shapes of, of the overall building, that 1926 addition in the back, um, unfortunately was added, but it's, as we know, it's now a historic addition. Um, and, but since that, that puts the massing on the back, increases the massing on the back, but on the other side, I guess it would be the east, no, the west side of the building with that, uh, the glass addition, to me, it, it you already have the difficult problem that, that the massing was already added in the back at, at a certain point. But to put weight on the other side of the building with this little addition sort of makes it a double problem. Um, and I, I agree with Luis that, if there has to be another accessible uh, entrance, I'd rather have that back 1920s um, uh, part added onto, if you if you see what I mean, because the, the it it 
the, the glass addition on this Western end makes that side heavier and it distorts what the, the to uh, visitors who, who have, who are not familiar with architecture and who are not a, a familiar with an uh, you know, the historical presentation of the building that we're trying to teach. Um, it really doesn't give a historical, uh, um, so I'm not articulating this well, I'm sorry. Um, yeah, I, I just don't like it. I just think it, I, I just, I think it, 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 it's not a good um, solution. And also, as we've talked about in a few meetings, those entrances to the kitchens um, are really important to uh, interpretation, the historical interpretation. And I think that's going to be important as we go on and, and are teaching about this building. And again, that entrance on the side masks that problem, that, that issue. Now, right now, that those doors are obscured by that big bush that's there that's, not, that's probably going to be taken away. But I think it'll be great when that's taken away because I think uh, interpreters will be able to, to point out those entrances in a clear way. I'm gonna stop there, I've said enough, thanks. Thank you very much, Sensi. Um, I see that uh, Bill has his hand up, uh, but uh, I, I see also, and I will get to him in a second, but, and uh, I see that also that there are a number of uh, people in the, in the audience as a members of the public, and I would encourage them uh, to make comments. And I know that at least some of them have very strong opinions, and I don't want to read any names, but <laughs> if any of them want to come forward and either expand or make their own comments, that'd be great, because it is a project that it's, interests all of us, and we all have, we must have something to say about it. Um, well, I didn't convince them, but uh, I last built to go ahead. No, I, I want to make sure I defer to public comment before I come around. But if no, there are, that, that's uh, okay. The, the, that's Melissa. You have another public uh, comment, uh, Melissa? I have another question. Um, mm -hmm. Well, what Nancy Frizzella Lee was just saying, I thought the other thing that Peter described this morning um, is you look at the plan right now. There's the addition and to the right where you step down and to the right there's that um, uh, historic door that had been cut down. I thought that that was going to be kind of featured um, in this new plan. Am I did I make this up in my head that um, th that it it would be visible and people could see it and there would be an opportunity to describe where that takes you. Also, the door. Um, uh, farther around from the this new glass uh, entryway, around the corner where you can't see it now, uh, to the left of this image, there's another door that takes you to the basement, um, which could well have been the the way slaves would have had to have entered or the, you know, the hired help. So, am I was I wrong? Did I misunderstand this, Peter? No, I think I think most well, I think you're right. It doesn't quite show in this rendering. The the door one's behind the bush and the other one's behind the addition here. So, but I, the intention would be to develop those as essentially featured entrances from the outside. They just yeah. wouldn't be enclosed. Yeah. Right. Okay. That's what I thought. It'd be cleaned up because as it is right now, it it collects uh, leaves and whatnot. So that would be have to be maintained. But it right. Um, a feature of the building um, in keeping with what I think Nancy Frizzella Lee was aiming at, because it's a very important part of the building. Part of the interpretive work, right. Okay. Uh, thank you, Melissa. I think, uh, Tom, were you raising your hand? Uh, yeah, I just want to respond to Melissa's. Uh, the only concern, I, I really, I like the idea of featuring that door because I think it's a very attractive door. But it's not will not be accessible to the public because it's not ADA compliant. And oh no no no! I know that it's but it's okay. You know, okay, so, I just want to be clear out. about that point. Yeah, but I like I love that idea of creating it almost as if it's a special garden door, you know, with some from, from creative um, plantings as well as brickwork around it. So I think that's the intent. Hey, thanks uh, very much, uh, Tom. Um, any other public comments? All right, 
So in uh, is there no other public comments? I will ask the commission for a vote. I will uh, highlight I, or I, Luis, could I, I? I did have some additional comments. If oh sure, go ahead, Bill. I'll, I'll keep them quite brief. Three things. The first is I I'm not sure I share the view of everybody that leaving this alone is a good idea. I think it's terrific that there's a project that's going to improve what's a pretty degraded corner of the building. Um, and, and just leaving it alone or leaving the building empty doesn't strike me as, as uh, uh, a good idea. Second, um, to the extent that we're concerned about the visibility of the stairs, if you kind of belong to the IM Pay School, uh, as many of you would know, the Swiss, for example, do spectacular things with staircases that are visible uh, and they highlight them and they design staircases that are actually quite attractive. And to the extent this is a window, that almost becomes an exterior feature. Uh, the third is I, like you, Louise, stood in that uh, 1920s edition this morning and it grabs you when you stand there and look out at the street. And I'd be the last guy to suggest that's the right place to put this entrance, but it it, it connects uh, to you when you stand there and look out those windows. And I, I just uh, think that might be an option uh, worth looking at. Thank you. Thanks very much, Bill. So I'm, I'm gonna ask the commission for, for a vote. And of course, we always have the options of um, uh, said it many times. <laughs> Uh, but uh, I want to to mention, at least from my personal perspective, that I do not believe that, that we are at a stage where we can make uh, um, um, an approval uh, uh, in parts or or something that that will allow us the project to go ahead. I think that what the issues that have been brought up are substantial, substantial, and that. Uh, I'm sure that the architect wants to address them. So I think that we should, from my own perspective, uh, I think that this is an application that should be continued and I don't see that it would be appropriate to, to have a, a partial approval of parts of the application. So having said that, I will ask the commission for a motion. And the options are to approve, to reject, uh, to continue or to approve with conditions. I I'll, move. I'll, oh. go, ahead. go ahead, Bill. I'll move. We continue. Second. Second. Uh, Tim. Aye. Uh, Bill. Aye. Walter. Aye. Kate. Aye. And I'm an I as well. So, uh, <laughs> so uh, let me ask you, uh, Mr. Chair, are we continuing to the next meeting or should we uh, pick a date? You know, uh, I'll, I'll leave that to the applicant that after the applicant, the, the commission will be more than open to uh, accommodate any time constraints or any time requests that the, the applicant makes. This is not a project to, to rush over and uh, to have it done tomorrow or anything like that. Okay. I think that, that the project uh, and we all collectively is benefiting from uh, the stewardship that you are giving to, 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 to this issue, which, which is so important. So I don't think that we should rush it in any way. So it will be up to you officially. We will uh, uh, continue to the next uh, a meeting, but uh, of course you will be absolutely free to request that continues to whatever date you want. Okay, well, let, if it's okay with you, I, I really do appreciate all of your input. Thank you for your your attention to this. I'm glad you all see how crazy difficult a problem this is. So <laughs> this is incredibly helpful to hear this input. Uh, why don't we continue to the next meeting, but let us regroup and figure out if we can get material revised in time and have some uh, something for you to look at. But but please don't rush it. <laughs> no, you can't rush this kind of stuff. It's, a, it's in the slow cooker. Okay, please uh, put it in the low slow. <laughs> Been around for 200 and how many years, Tom? 273 years so far. Oh, wait, you, you're muted, Tom. You can't, we can't hear you. <laughs> We can't be too slow because we have uh, April 
2025 that we would right. like to have the building ready to go. It doesn't have to be perfect conditions. <laughs> um, and, and in fact, six months before, in October 2024, is the 250th of uh, celebration of the Provincial Congress. So it would be really good to have a way to show the building to the millions of guests that are going to be coming to Concord over that. Not that millions. Of time. So, well, be, please be, be assured that the, the Historic Districts Commission will not be a, a delaying factor in, in that uh, purpose. I know, <laughs> I, know, I know. I appreciate your help. And really, well, all, the HDC are all going to be reenactors. So, you know, yeah. we've got time. So, okay. <laughs> great concerns and great ideas. It's a all right. And we'll it's a we'll have some some drams of most cider or something like that. <laughs> Flip. <laughs> Flip. Okay, well, thank you very much. All right, thank you all. Very much appreciate your time. Thank you very we, much. Thank you, uh, everybody. We will now uh, go to the next continued public hearing, which is uh, Margaret Bratton, 286 uh, Lexington Road, American Bible Historic District, to install a new addition, new door, modified balcony. And uh, this was an extension, so is the applicant here? Is there a tuck in? Uh, Mr. Dutton, yeah. Welcome. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> um, this is Bill Hubner, the architect, and Maybe. I'm uh, Sheila Lemke, the designer, and I'm with the uh, Meg Bruton and um, there, and sorry, we're not a little. <laughs> yeah, <that's laughs> so, a good thing we had a lazy season. <laughs> yeah, super. <laughs> so you get the whole team. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, if you want to go ahead and, and give us a, a quick presentation. Uh, sure. Do you have the plans on file? You? Uh, yeah, they are there. Great. Want to walk through it, though? Sure. Um, what the proposal is, is um, not to change the footprint of this home um, at all, but to um, expand the half story above the left side wing. So in this view, the, the front elevation, the, exactly right. That is, there currently is a roof there and it currently has some habitable space in it. Um, and what we're proposing to do is to raise the roof line to increase the amount of usable space in that area. Um, and in addition, and as part of that, the roof, um, the roof line of the front and the left side elevation and the rear will be affected as well. Um, and that's the that's the gist of the project. It turns out that at the rear part of the house, um, you can see this both in the second floor plan and in the rear elevation, there is an existing balcony um, off of a bedroom. Um, it is poorly, it was poorly constructed when it was built, um, not certainly not part of the original um structure um, that was here, I suspect. Um, and But it's a nice feature. And so in the course of this other work, we're hoping to um, enhance the actual physical construction of that deck, make it um, more sustainable as far as, you know, being um, easier to drain the the water that 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 will accumulate that does accumulate on it now it's sort of trapped in the way it's currently built um so that element again is not it's not a new feature but it's been it's being renovated and remodeled to make it function better um so the front facade the thing that would be changing would be the left wing and it would be the second floor of the, of the left wing it's at the roof line is going up um, and then we're adding a feature because the front wall face is set, set back on the second floor. It requires a little roof to be added, a skirt roof, um, which will cover the um, the exposed um, setback area over the first floor. Um, we decided in this iteration to wrap that feature, that skirt roof feature, around across the left side of the elevation, and then return it on the back side um, into the um, existing um, in, uh, side of the of the main cape structure, um, which is remaining as is. Um, and so that creates a it helps ground that element, um, keeps the at that side entry um, you know in, it to a scale of sort of you know an individual you know, an individual approaching it provides protective cover for the door. 
um, and sets the second floor piece uh, again back um, visually from the um, from the first floor. Uh, the way we managed managed to get um, some additional headroom in the uh, second floor was to bring the the main roof um, of that wing down a little bit, but then to, to introduce two shed dormers um, that allow for um, the space to be um, utilized more, if, you know, effectively. Um, if the if the board recalls, this project was presented to you um, at the last meeting. And there was a more um, aggressive um, proposal to to achieve more volume on the second floor. Certainly not a great deal of volume, but more than what this this particular scheme is proposing. Um, but in the in lieu of the comments about the last proposal, um, we sacrificed a few square feet of of usable space and volume um, in order to create a, um, a quieter. Um, um, a, a facade on the left side, um, a, a somewhat lower um, presence on the street side as well, which is seen from the front elevation. Um, and that results in a, you know, also a smaller uh, sort of visual effect on the back as well. Um, but um, um, yeah, anyways, that's that's it in a nutshell. Um, mm -hmm. Sheila, did I miss anything or? No, I think you got it all. Yeah, no, I, th I think the, the the major change though was the uh, the east side of the elevation there. So that it's sort of a more balanced facade. You know, we've we've centered the window on the bathroom in the center there, so that it's you know it sort of works. And I think the 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 new shed roof at the entry helps us sort of place the entry door into that building there too. So. Um, and I think the back elevation you had no issues with because it's not in a, a place where you have a view. So uh, I felt, I think we, this is a a good option here. Yeah. And we still feel that the rear elevation is, is perfectly appropriate and handsome. Yeah. Um, um, it does indeed have some balance and it's the, the, the existing first floor elements that um, are really are, most of them are not being affected at all. Uh, we've tried to introduce any new elements on the second floor to be, um, you know, work with and in, you know, in, in again in harmony with the overall facade um, compositions. Well, uh, thanks very much. Uh, before I ask uh, our commissioners to make comments, I I just have to mention something that uh, it's a consideration that you have. A problem in your hands because that's a very charming house which I happen to see every single day of my life as I drive through back and forth <laughs> and uh, it's it's a, a, a big charge you have in keeping it as nice as it is uh, while adding some other things I certainly don't see any anything contrary to that but I just I have to mention that because I, I, from a personal perspective that was of the that's one of the nice things that I see when I go back and forth from home. Uh, so I'll start the discussion again with our architect, architect team, uh, Whitney. Uh, Louise, I, <clears throat> I live closer to that house than you do, you know. <laughs> well, <laughs> <laughs> um, agree. <laughs> uh, no, it, it, it's a very simple, it's an old gas station. I think the owner certainly knows. I think everybody knows. It's just it's yeah, a, yeah. Yeah. sort of an old giant Cape Cod shaped thing. Yeah. Um, and I appreciate what you've you've done to work on that uh, left east. I guess it's the east elevation. Um, and you know, it's a little it, it's a little bit more fussy in particular than the the rest of this very sort of simple house. But I don't. I think I understand what you've done, and I don't. I really don't have any comments. I think it's fine. It's adds some more texture and detail to that end, and it's got a door in it, which is great. So I don't have any comments. Thank you very much, Tim. Uh, Bill. Uh, I like it a lot. My only question is the window. Um, is it seems inconsistent with the window, which are like a six over one uh, on that elevation, as well as on the front elevation. I, I assume there's some interior layout restriction on Using yeah, that was, that was a kind of a critical window to try to bring in the light into the to the bathroom. It's in a shower, so we can't make it too wide, um, you know, in order to, to to generate. I mean, it can certainly become a you know 
sort of a, a four little mm -hmm. a little tiny square window um, as opposed to I think we have it at six right now but yeah, I was I was more thinking the other way, whether it, uh, having it be taller, uh, but but I appreciate there's a, maybe an internal constraint on that. Yeah, we have a, a wall to the right of it that is limiting it because there's a closet. We're really trying to maximize the little space here with a mm -hmm. walk-in closet and a bathroom. Um, Thank you. Yeah, and, and it, from a kind of vernacular standpoint, um, it's not inconsistent to have a um, um, when there's, especially when it's not a full story roof line, which this one is not, it's, a, it's basically a kind of story, a, a half, a half, half story, um, is to have a modest sized window that would be, especially when it's get centered in the gable like this, um, and it would often be smaller and be higher. Um, it's more like a gable end window. I okay. I'm, yeah, exactly. Thank you. You're welcome. We lost you. Cool. Is it? Luis? Yes. Oh. I, okay. No, I, I lost uh, audio for, for a short time. Okay. Hey, Walter. I think it's great. And, uh, <laughs> it, any of the considerations that uh, we had uh, last time around, I think have been uh, wonderfully addressed and it uh, it honors the, uh, the history of the house. It's not uh, not incongruous, but uh, or incongruous, I should say, with, uh, with anything. So I'm quite happy with it. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Kate. Uh, what Walter just said, uh, thank you. I think you did a nice job quieting it down to use your own words uh, on the left side elevation and um, the scale and the scope are appropriate for the, the building in the district. So thank you. Thanks very much, Kate. Uh, and I echo the, the comments of all my commissioners that I'm very happy that I'm going to continue seeing something that it's very nice <laughs> along with him, that it's a closer, closer neighbor. So I'll ask the commission for a motion. Uh, I Oh, Tim, go ahead. I've already done one. I uh, I move that we approve the uh, uh, sorry, what I've lost track of the address. Two eighty six Lex. Two eighty six. Sorry, I'm sorry about that. I I move that we approve the uh, the submission of two eighty six Lexington Road as submitted. Second. Second. Okay. Uh, Tim. Hi. Bill. Aye. Walter? Aye. Kate? Aye. And I'm an I as well. So thanks very much. Congratulations and uh, good luck with uh, your construction and your materials. <laughs> Thank you so much. We're so excited. I hope you'll come by when it's all finished and we can show it off to you. <laughs> Thank you so very much. We'll look forward to it. Right. Of course, of course. Thank you all. We really appreciate your time. Thank you. Right. All right, the final application, and I'll ask our senior town planner to instruct us about uh, what's happening. Uh, uh, are they here, 428 uh, Lower Road? Yeah, oh, no, I haven't heard from So this is that, um, sorry, this is that application that was continued uh, two meetings ago. Um, and right, I haven't heard. So I think okay. we need to vote on whether to continue or you know, your four your four options. <laughs> yeah. Okay. We will. I'll uh, I'll remind the the commission as a matter, uh, for the record uh, what's the the background of this application. We this application was made I think that two meetings ago. Uh, we started engaging with the applicant, which presented uh, some of the plans that they they were planning to do. There were some uh, discrepancies and we didn't have all the materials. And then suddenly the applicant left the meeting. So we made a, our a decision to continue the application. And uh, we, I think that we wrote to the applicant uh, and correct me if I'm wrong, did we? Did we notify the applicant that we were continuing his application to the next two meetings? That's right. 
we notified them, I think, three times. Okay. So they have been notified that their application was being continued and that they had the opportunity to come back and, and finish the, the application process. We haven't heard from them. Uh, this is still an open application, so and it has not been withdrawn uh, by the applicant. So I am a little bit of uh, uh, in confusion to uh, figure out what is the correct way to proceed. I think that from the standpoint that we have an open application that we have to act on it. To, from the standpoint that we don't have an application that it's approvable because we don't have all the material, then we cannot uh, approve it. But I don't think that it's our purview to uh, withdraw it in behalf of the applicant. Uh, so I don't know if anybody has any any opinions on this matter. <laughs> um, I'll, uh, I'll ask uh, Anne Clifford to to give us some guidance if. Uh, she has been able to figure that out. <laughs> um, right. Well, I know that if you do not act, um, then they can proceed as planned. Yeah, that's um, what I heard about. Right. So you do need to take some sort of action if you if you want to stick to what you had said, which you know I would expect that you would. Um, so I think you just have the the four options as usual. Okay, then I, I will go to, to the process of uh, asking commissioners for comments. And I will start on the screen now, Bill. <laughs> I, I, to Anne's point, I think if in fact they, uh, in the absence of our action could proceed as documented, that's unacceptable because the example they provided uh, and then refuted, if you will, uh, was not acceptable, I think, in our discussion. So I, I think we have no alternative but to, to uh, disapprove it. Okay, uh, Tim. Uh, yeah, I would I would agree. I think we're I, as as much as I understand it all, we should reject the application. Okay, uh, Walter. And if we deny, they can still reapply, right? Correct. Yeah. Um, was what's the definition of insanity? Right. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> We we'll, 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 we'll that out. <laughs> I don't think there's any alternative other than to deny at this point, and that. It's uh, instead of uh, considering it uh, two or three or four more times uh, to no avail, uh, if they want to continue, they can reapply. It's my attitude. My Thanks very much, uh, Walter. Uh, Catherine, do you look you are in deep thought? <laughs> well, I always feel bad for people who are missing deadlines and things because I'm one of them sometimes, but I think we have to deny. Okay. And uh, I agree exactly with the comments of all my fellow commissioners. And I ask for public comments. Are there any public comments? Yeah, I don't hear, not hear any public comments. I will ask the commission for a motion to uh, approve, approve with conditions, continue or deny the application of uh, 428 Lowell Road. I'll move that we deny the application uh, as presented for 428 Lowell Road. The second? Second. Uh, Kate? Aye. Walter? Aye. William? Aye. Timothy? Aye. And I'm an I as well. So the application is denied and we'll notify the applicant of that decision. So it's all. Can I just ask a procedural on on uh, on that? Is that notification we just email them, or is that something that has to be done by certified mail and all that stuff? So okay. we we send them a, a certificate of denial by postal service. Not email. Uh, yes. Well, it, it's sent via email, but we still have to draft the certificate of denial. Thank you. And and uh, and I usually sign it. The chair signs it. So it's and it's the same thing when we approve a, a project. All right. Um, the other business that we have, and we'll go through it as quickly as possible, is something that uh, our senior town planner mentioned, which is that there are some people, especially after the pandemic, and for all the kinds of various reasons, get an application approved, and then they cannot start the construction or the project uh, within the six months of the application approval. 
and that is one of the requirements. And uh, I just want to inform the commission that there are a number of ways around it. The first one is that the definition of starting the project, once you start the project, you have three years from the beginning of the project to finish it. So if you have a project that was approved and you don't have time to, to start it, if you remove one nail, well, you started the project. So it's it's I don't see much of a problem. And I will tell you that I exactly did that because you know we we asked for some doors and the doors were going to be there in two weeks, and they suddenly they said no, it's gonna be seven months. So there, that's what we did. But then the second issue is that there, there may be some applicants that they have legitimate constraints. And uh, I wanted to uh, have the opinion of the commission on whether we should approve this request administratively. Uh, I believe that we should, you see, but I don't believe that we should change the rules of the six months and six months. So I will uh, hear any input the commissioners may have on this subject. I can go around, Bill. <laughs> you are the first. You are right there. <laughs> I think an administrative approval is fine. Uh, Tim, uh, I think I understood what you said, but uh, yeah, I, I would agree. It sounds like administrative. Okay, uh, Walter. Um, I agree. Uh, Kathleen, <laughs> administrative approval. All right, and I, I agree as well. So uh, we can make a, a vote uh, so it goes on record. So Bill? Aye. Tim? Aye. Walter? Aye. Kathleen? Aye. And I'm an aye as well. So that will allow the town planner to administratively approve a six months extensions. Um, and uh, we'll go from there and we will inform the applicants that they can always uh, remove that nail and that will work. Okay, Tim, go ahead, please. Luis, just a question on the, the three-year thing. That, that's that been that way for a while, right? Yes. And that's three years to complete it from when we approve the project? Uh... I think that, uh, I don't remember the wording, but I think that the yeah. it's from the time that the project is started. Okay. Look, but we can check it because I'm not sure. Um, the language we have on the certificate is that some element of the work must begin. Within six months, but is the completion from that point or from- Yes, the, is three years. Three years construction, okay. essentially, it sounds like. Uh, I mean, the, the only reason I was asking was, you know, even, I, I mean, we had projects that are all, sometimes only took a year and now taking three years because of COVID, it's getting better, but I, it, three years sounds, still sounds right to me. It's a very generous construction window, so. Uh, yeah, and I, 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 I think that they, they, I think that there may have been applicants that go beyond the three years and you know, this is the type of thing that it's approved administratively all the time. So I don't see any problem with that at all. Okay, thank you. Okay. And then uh, I just want to let you know that we have uh, um, a project or a plan that has been mentioned before to change the way that uh, HNC commissioners are approved. I will give you an update in the sense that I have met with uh, the uh, leadership of uh, the Concord Public Library and uh, the Concord Museum, and they both have expressed their, that they are in favor of the changes that were being proposed. We had a very successful meeting last night with the Commission of Natural with the uh, Commission of Natural Resources, where they understood what we were trying to pursue, and they also agreed that it was a good idea. Uh, next week, I will meet with the Planning Board, and they, this is the fourth of the nominated entities that uh, appoint the, that nominate associates and full members of the HCC. And after that, I will have. Uh, meeting with the select board uh, for the same purpose. Uh, I think that uh, I, we are ready or I am ready to share with you the document that it's supporting these changes, which describes uh, both the changes that we're making and the uh, legislation that supports uh, those changes made. But uh, the important thing is that it was, this would be a change in the guidelines for administration, which is not part of the enabling legislation, but falls into a paragraph of the enabling legislation, which allows 
the HTC as a commission to create uh, those rules and regulations or guidelines as it perceives that are appropriate in order to discharge their duties more efficiently. So it would be something that uh, after we obtain the support of all the nominated entities, which of course is essential for this, we can approve a, in one of our regular meetings. And I will share with you that document. Uh, we go from there and I'll keep you updated. If you have any questions or any comments, or if you have any feedback, please let me know or do it now. <laughs> Sounds good. Thanks, Louise. You're here. All right. Then uh, I will ask for a motion to adjourn. Did so were there a meeting uh, minutes to approve? No, because the minutes were released today and we need at least okay. one minute to okay. <laughs> or were released yesterday or something like that. Yeah. Okay. Very good. All right. I move to adjourn this meeting. Second. Second. I ask for a voice vote. Vote. <laughs> I, uh, I, 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 okay. I, the ice have it. Have a good night. <laughs>